The story of Susan Leonard, a child known as Little Pistol, is part of the legend of Western folklore. Except for the intervention of Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday, Susan might have vanished into a nameless grave. As it happened, Little Pistol became a central character of an episode which started tongues wagging from Dodge to the New Mexico border. Gossip established Susan Leonard as the first female outlaw in the Western country. But the truth about Little Pistol, as truth often turns out to be, was stranger than any fiction. Favor prairie chicken, but give me Bob White quail and toast. It's a handsome spread, Miss Kate. Thanks, Wyatt. John, dear, you need good nourishing food. Oh, I have it, Katie. The very essence of corn dissolved in alcohol. They're robbing my place. Where's my gun? Shoot, Wyatt, shoot. Now oh, there are too many people. Wyatt. John, the dinner. You're talking of dinner when I'm being robbed? The drawer's clean. How much was in it? About 20,000, Doc. All right, this one's dead. Take him over to Doc McCarty. Come on. You recognize any of them? No, Marshal. They had masks on with eye holes cutting them. Quit jabbering, Wyatt. They haven't got much of a start. We can catch them. Take care of the body. Okay, boss, let's go. Yeah! Over there. Must be them. Twenty thousand dollars in my best faro dealer. Wait a minute, Doc. I know how you feel. Let's not rush into things. Wyatt, this isn't John Law business, it's personal. And what about your horse? Old local enjoys living, you know. Let's make this fight on foot. Why do you always have to be right? It ain't your money. It ain't your best faro dealer. You can afford to remain calm, cool, and collected. All right, General Custer. I await your orders. Yeah. We can't cut him off from running, but we can try not flank him. Hope they're cooking breakfast. Come on. Take a coat off, her arms hurt. Stand still, you little brat. Put your arm down. Now stand still, honey. Stand well, still. We're not going to hurt you. Now just stand still. Yeah. yeah. The bullet just nicked it. Give me this. Now, what's your name, sis? Little Pistol. He means your real name. We'll tell you. We'll tell you nothing. Now just take it easy, honey. Just little take it brat, easy. Little you ought to have a spanking. You give me back my pistol. Where do I get your bandage tied? We're wasting time, Wyatt. We could overtake those fellas. Not in Bushwhacker, and I want to ask her a few questions. I want my pistol. You give me back my pistol. All right. Hey, you're unloading us. 
What did you expect them to do? Let you shoot us? Ooh. You take a while, I'm going after my money. Wait a minute, Doc. Here. Now look, there's no sense in cold trailing it alone. Besides, I think she'll talk. <laughs> that little wildcat. Stop her! What? She took those cartridges from the pocket. Hold still, you little brat. We better take all the clues off. Well, I'll just take her gun. Now, you had your chance to behave. I hate you. I'll show you both. She ought to have our britches warmed. All right, you spank her. No, you do it. I'm so mad I might raise blisters. You must be hungry. Come on. Where? Dodge City. No! All right, suit yourself. I want my pistol! You give me back my pistol! You stop that. The next time you touch that gun, I'm going to drop you off and leave you right here. Wasn't touching it. Yes, you were. Little girls like you got no business with guns. You got nothing to be afraid of. Not afraid? Well, everybody's scared of something. Are you really Wyatt Earp? And is he really Doc Holliday? That's right. You're fast guns. Oh. Now, who told you that? They. Nobody. Who's they? Not nobody. All right. <laughs> I told you to shoot her, Rocky. It's too hot in there, boss. I did take a crack at her, but I guess I missed. Well, I don't think she'll talk, but she might. We'll have to ride back into Dodge tonight. Now scrub hard, child. And then we'll get dressed in these nice, clean clothes. Isn't this a pretty dress? No, I want my old clothes. Oh, no, you don't. They're filthy. Wyatt will like you much better in decent little girls' clothes. He likes you. Don't you like him? No, he took my gun. Oh, little girls don't go around carrying guns and trying to shoot people. Now, come on. We'll get all nice and dry. If I wear the clothes, can I go see Mr. Earp? No, Wyatt is too busy in his office. Then I'll tear up the clothes. I'll take this dress right now. No, no. Oh, all right. You can see Wyatt. Well, put your mind to it, Doc. Uh, you used to handle kids when you were practicing dentistry. How did you, uh, well, how, did, how, how did you gain their confidence? I didn't. I used to have their parents hold them while I shoved a wooden block in their mouth so they wouldn't bite. Then I yanked the tooth. Yeah, well, that's no good. Why, you labor the obvious. Maybe our little pistol belonged to one of the gang. Maybe she was kidnapped. At any rate, we've got a scared youngster on our hands. Yeah, well, we still got to try and gain her confidence and make her talk. You know, she probably could name every man in that bunch if she wanted to. Perhaps they'll come back for her. Hmm. Why, well, she's a deadly witness. Maybe they'll kidnap her or even kill her. Well, you say that mighty offhanded. I don't expend sentiment I can't afford, Marshal. If we had left her like I wanted to do, we could have caught up with those hoodlums. Now where are we? Or to put it bluntly, where's my money? You cherish little pistol. I don't like brats. You go away. I came to see Miss Jerk. Boy, you oh. How can he be such a fast gun if he drinks so much? Well, uh, liquor doesn't seem to affect him. See, what a pretty little gal. <laughs> yeah, new clothes, huh? Stop it. I want my gun and I want the bullets. Oh. Well, then uh, you're going to have to trade. For what? Well, you answer some questions and uh, I'll return the gun. What questions? Well, to start with, what's your name? I told you. It's Little Pistol. Well, you have another name. No, just Little Pistol. All right, then who were those men you were with out there? Can't tell you. Why not? They get me. Doc Holliday and I guarding you day and night? That's pretty fast. 
They'll come at night, and you won't be around. Well, and you can stay here with me during the day, and then at night you can stay with Dr. and Mrs. Holliday. No, I want to stay with you all the time. I don't like Mrs. Holliday. She talks too much. She reminds me of my... Can I stay with you, Mr. Earp, all the time? Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't I... Uh... Uh, I'll move in with Dr. and Mrs. Holliday, and uh, then you can stay with all of us. How about that? No. You just want me to tell. Then you'll send me to the orphan's home or someplace. Orphan's home? Say, your folks are... You're not going to give I me know, a wait job? A, wait a minute. Now, look, I've got to catch those outlaws and put them in jail, and then they won't bother you, you understand? But in order for me to catch them and put them in jail, you've got to tell me who they are. You understand that? Well, I'll think about it. Good. Now, i got to go out there on patrol, and you can... You can walk right along with me. I'll tell you one name. Susan. Susan? Well, now, who's that? That's me. Susan, huh? Well, I like Susan. That's a mighty pretty name. Thank you. try it. It's a little too risky. We'll camp outside Dodge and try again tomorrow. I don't even spot any strangers around. Wyatt, why don't you turn in on the sofa? Uh, you take a rest. I don't sleep much. And if I doze off, kid, he'll spell me. Uh, they're not likely to come around here. Mommy. Daddy. Where are you? Indians. Apaches. Don't kill me. Please. Oh, don't kill me. Ah! Now, you'll be all right, sis. Take it easy, darling. Just lay back down. Honey. Doc and I John, are what is it? The kid had a nightmare. Yeah, that's it, Doc. Oh, poor Just baby. Relax, honey. Perhaps happen. if we gave her a little soothing syrup. My tooth, it aches. It aches awful right here. I'll have a look. Kitty, bring that lamp down. No, it'll hurt worse. Wyatt, you better hold her. Yeah. Now open your mouth wide, honey. I want to get a look. No, I want Miss Durrup to look. All right, honey. You come up here and open your mouth real wide, and I'll take a look, huh? That's it. Mm -hmm. Ooh, see. You're a good girl, sis. You can close your mouth now. It still hurts. All right, Mrs. Holliday will give you some medicine. Come on, Wyatt. You go to sleep, honey. Where are you going? Outside in the hall. We'll leave the door open. Be right back. Pain will be gone quicker than a wink, dear. I'll pour a teaspoonful of this, then you gulp it right down. She's got a couple of impacted right upper molars. Wyatt, would you be kind enough to ask Doc McCarty if he's got any nitrous oxide? Nitrous oxide? There. Now drink some water, honey. McCarty will know what it is. Did you ever hear a woman talk so much? <laughs> hey, are you sure this... New gas thing in my jig is safe. I didn't give her much. It's the start of talking, the main idea. Nitrous oxide does that? Sometimes. Occasionally it makes them giggle or talk silly. Well, you take a rest, Doc. Miss Kate and I will watch you. All right, Wyatt. 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 
think she's coming out of it. Don't shoot at them. Wait. The soldiers. Yes. I'll run and hide in the barn, Mommy. I'll stay there until... Susie. Hmm. Susie. What happened after you hid in the barn, hmm? Barn? I didn't stay there. I got scared. The patches all around the house. I ran into the bushes. They caught me. One eye Melbourne. One eye Melbourne. They gave me to one eye Melbourne. Don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Don't kill me. Susan. Susan, honey, wake up. I'm awake, mister. Now, what's your name? Susan Leonard. And where do you live? Copper Spring. It's in New Mexico. I'm sleepy. I'm a sleepy head. <laughs> Is that the truth? We're just babbling. Well, I think it's the truth. Look, if she wakes up again, you call Doc. I'm going to go to the telegraph office. Next up at that Santa Fe Depot. You wired that fort in New Mexico. This comes from Prescott, Arizona. Hmm. Well, Army commands move around, Hal. Apache attack at Copper Springs. One eye Milburn believed to have ridden with Indians. You stay here and watch the office. I'll be over at the Dodge House, right? this morning, huh? Pulse normal, what? Huh? I'm mad at you. Why didn't you stay here all night like you promised? Well, there were big doings last night, Susan. Don't you remember? Yeah. Doc Hall, they pulled out two of my teeth. See? Hey. Oh, those are mighty horrible-looking wounds. Hey, does it hurt, huh? I am an ag. What? I'm in agony. Oh. Now, Susan. <laughs> Come on, eat all your oatmeal. Ow! Katie, I said look warm. She burned me. Here, I'll go and cool it. Uh, shall I put it in the icebox, John? Katie, all you have to do is pour cold milk on it. Now get that maid up here. This place looks like a pig pen. Right away. What? Katie said that Susan got caught in an Indian fight. Oh, yeah, she did a lot of talking. Who talked? You did. I did not. I don't remember saying one word. Yeah, well, I remember. Let's see, you're uh, Susan Leonard, and uh, you're from Copper Springs, New Mexico. I told you that? Yep. You also told me that the Apaches captured you and turned you over to a white renegade by the name of One-Eyed Milburn. It's all a lie. A big lie. Now, I think Milburn's our man. But what I can't figure out is why I'd want to keep Susan alive. You want to tell us that? The other men wouldn't let... I'm not talking. Why did you check this out with the army? Yeah, there was an Apache attack in Copper Springs, all right. Milburn is believed to have ridden with the Indians. Any line on where he might be? No, but I'm going to wire all the sheriffs between here and the New Mexico line. Susie, did one eye Milburn wear a patch over his eye? I won't tell you nothing. All right, then let's make a deal. You describe Mr. Milburn and all his men, and I'll give you back your gun. No. Maybe we ought to give Susan some more gas. I think it'll be a very good idea. Shame on you, Wyatt. That stuff is dangerous. Have you no pity in your heart for this child? None at all. It wouldn't work a second time, Wyatt. They want me to depend on them. Oh, my poor baby. No. Oh, Katie in the maternal mood. Wyatt, let's do our detective work at the bar. You drink too much. And you, you're nothing but a big old John Law trying to get me in trouble. 
That's right, dear. Don't trust any man. Now, wait a minute. I tried to explain it. Don't apologize. You're nothing but a sassy little snip. And, Kate, you're nothing but a sentimental idiot. Come on, Wyatt. I see through you both now. Miss Kate is my only friend. Now, remember, we ride straight up to the hotel. Rocky and me will go inside and attend to the kid. And we'll blast our way out if we have to. I don't like it, boss. Herp and Holiday can do some blasting, too. Well, that's fine with me if you want to go on the run with a murder and a kidnapping charge against us. That kid's the only one that can identify us. I wanted to do the smart thing days ago and get rid of her. Let you talk me out of it. Now, all in favor of taking my advice, say so. Well, how, how about you? Well, how about it, boys? Yeah. Let's go. All right. I'm a might worried. Well, there's no need to be. Melbourne's easy to spot. I spread this telegram around while there'll be a posse and soldiers on his tail. It's not Melbourne. It's Katie. She wants to adopt Susan. What? Impudent, sassy little brat. I'd spank her three times a day if I had to go to court for it. <coughs> Besides, there's the element of contagion. Yeah. Wyatt, I'm going to put my foot down hard with Katie. I want you to back me up. All right. Now, there's some doubt that Susan's an orphan. What? Well, the Apaches attacked the settlement. Her mommy and daddy sent her into the barn to hide, but she, uh, well, she ran off in the brush somewhere. It's just possible that... Nonsense. They're dead. Both of them. Now, don't you go upsetting Katie with that kind of talk, Wyatt. Look, I just thought you said... I you said were... it, and I mean every word of it. And this Kate shouldn't go getting her heart set. Wyatt, it... it's her heart. It's not yours. Now, where are you going? To the telegraph office. You take care of Susan, Papa Holiday. Ten years old living here. You're lying. He's lying, Melbourne. Hey, it's the kid. Let's get her, boys. Susie. Doc Holliday and I dropped him all over the street. Is one I dare? Well, if he's not, he's sure gonna wish he was. Now, this telegram just came. Looks like your prayers have been answered. Mommy, Daddy alive. But I didn't pray for it. I guess I'm wicked. I was sure I'd never see Mommy and Daddy again. So, so I prayed for something else. Oh. What was that? Well... I prayed that you'd give me back my gun. Then I prayed that I'd grow up and be one of your deputies and live with you. Is that awful wicked? Well, Susie, an arrangement like that can be sinful. But the good Lord saved you. <laughs> well, he 
cleaned up the country, the old Wild West country. He made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long live his fame, and long live his glory, and long may his story be. 